And today we are back to talk about this plant, which is known as stinky toe, Jatoba or West Indian locust. The Latin name for this plant is Hamnemia corbro. I'm going to put the spelling there because I always butcher these names. Now, why is it called stinky toe? Well, according to reports, this looks like somebody's toes. I'm assuming, judging by the look of this, it's somebody's big toe. And why is it called stinky? Because when you break it apart, and you can see little pieces here. This is what I broke apart yesterday and it still smells of somebody's stinky feet. If you buy this fruit and you don't get that smell, then I don't know what you've gone and bought or maybe it's rotten. But after 24 hours, it still smells like this. Now, before I go into like the content of it and its medicinal uses, just to let you know that the outer shell of this fruit is extremely thick and very hard. That if you want to break it apart to eat, you're going to have to use like a hammer or in my case, I'm not saying for you to do this. I'm just giving you it, like, just letting you know how I managed to open mine because I didn't have a hammer. I had to use my kettlebells. Now, like I said before, do not go and hurt yourself using some gym instrument or heavy instrument to break apart this fruit and then come and blame me and said I did it. Don't follow what I did. Use the appropriate equipment to break it apart. I just wanted to let you know that it is a very hard shell. Now, as you can imagine with many fruits, there's loads of vitamins and minerals. You've got the vitamin C's, you've got potassium, you've got iron. You've also got fiber, which is, you know, your gut friendly bacteria's best friend. It looks after your gut, you need your fiber. When you open it, you're gonna have this little bit in the middle like this. And this is the bit that you eat. Now, mm. <laughs> it has a very sweet taste. Now, if you've ever had velvet tamarind, it is very much like that velvety taste, that velvety texture, and it's sweet. So usually, traditionally, it's used in like, you could put it in smoothies and so on. So like I said, it's got all the vitamins, it's got all the minerals. If you want, you can add it to your smoothies. Once you've eaten all the outer bit, what you can expect to see in the middle of it is this seed. I don't know if I could put it closer so that you could actually see the texture of it. Like it's very like, I've had this for a little while, so it's not the freshest of the fresh, but you can see the texture that has gone powdery on my finger. Now, how is it used medicinally? Now, it's known to be an antimicrobial, an antibacterial, and antifungal. It's also used to boost immunity and also for overall well-being. So you often find it added as part of a wellness drinks in Southern America. But you use other parts of the plants as well. So the barks use the resin from the roots as well as the leaves. So the bark and the leaf in Panama, for example, is used for diabetes, more so the bark. But also the resin from the roots of the tree can be used to treat upper respiratory tract infection. And these uses are currently being proved by science because our ancestors were gangster and knew what they were doing. So if you want to learn more about plants and their medicinal uses around the world, don't forget to subscribe, like, share the video, and then explore other videos that I've done, uh, Ghana herbs, I've also done herbs from Nigeria, so feel free to subscribe.